We are not stopping here. Talks about me not being at level. No man has been able to beat me. He doesn't talk about the little magical potion. I'm going to give him some special powers. There's no shortcuts to the top. Honest, hard, rap. Critics said we can't. He's not good enough. He's up the wrong way. He said the same with Carl Frampton. English, British, Commonwealth, European, International, World, Tiles. The road to unification starts here. I believe I'm better than in every single department. On 2 15, it's going to be brutal. He's going to be walking into a bear pit. I'm not in this game to make friends. Barry is getting an idea. Hello and welcome to No Filter Boxing. This week, we break down the all-British IBF featherweight world title fight between defending champion Josh Warrington of Leeds and his challenger from Sheffield, Kid Galahad. Joining me are two former world champions, Anthony Crawler, former WBA lightweight champion back in 2016, and of course, my good friend, Barry Jones, who was WBO king many moons ago. Welcome, fellas. Um, Barry, I'll come to you first. Uh, throughout the world of boxing, um, Kid Galahad, that might not be a name that's too familiar with too many people, but this could be a tricky fight for Josh Warrington. It's, it's a massive tricky fight. It's just one of those banana skins, it really is, because you, know, you, you sort of think, because you know, he's not, not a massively well-known fighter, though he should be, to be honest, I think he's really skillful, he tends to get, he'll tend to get overlooked. But the strength he has, you know, that, that he's not a, a KO artist, but he has power, and also because he's from that Ingle gym, that, that awkwardness and that hard to hit clean, that, that the variety that he has to his game, makes him an awkward for any fighter. And Anthony, um, both boxers, they have different strengths going into this one. What's your general view of it? I think it's going to be a great fight. I can't wait for it. I think the winner of this fight will be decided on who can dictate the pace of the fight. Josh Warren is so good at making a fighter, you know, try, to try and live with him and very, very few fighters can. Whereas I see Kid Galahad is trying to, you know, control it, maybe pot shot a little bit, use that effective Ingle style. And um, it's a great fight, and I think there's been a little bit of needle in the, um, in the build-up, so who's going to keep a cool head that night is, um, is going to be so important. Looking at both their styles, let's look at um, the champion first, Josh Warrington. Let's look at his strengths. Now, for me, he's got more strength than what people think. He's great at infighting, but he's also got a terrific jab. So have a look at him here. This jab of his, well-schooled, well-timed, and it gave Carl Frampton problems. It really did, and what he, what he does with the jab, it's a solid, he steps behind it as well, so he's always, he always has That's a forward cool. momentum, so he has a bit of power in it, and, 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 it, and it knocks, and even if it's not a sharp jab, it's a ramrod left hand, so it knocks you off, off balance. But what he uses it for is for this. It gets him into range. So it's not always just, it's not, it's not just a range finder, he puts weight behind it, but he can't throw these combinations unless he, unless he finds how far away he is with that jab. So he's using the jab judges and then, the distance. then judges the distance and yeah. goes through the gears. Yes, he does, and he goes through the gears as good as anyone. He's um, like, Barry then he'll step in with the jab, so there'll be more behind. It's a strong jab. Because people tend to think of Josh Warrington as a mid to short range fighter, you know, and he's very good at it, but he's still very well schooled, hands nice and high, and then pops that jab yeah, out to I, set I, this I, type of work up. I think he, he put that myth to bed against Lee Selby. Yes. Because right, we all said he had, he had to rush Lee Selby, he had to yeah. smother his work, do what he did his best, all the pressure, pressure, because he, he is really a pressure fighter, isn't he, yeah. Josh Warrington? But he showed there, he didn't rush forward. He did what, he, he fainted, he moved to the side, he used that jab again tremendously well, yeah. always moving on the tag, and he showed a side to his game that, to me, he never shown before. And, yeah. and when he needed it most, when he stepped up that world level, he produced the best performance yeah. of his career. We have, obviously, we have to look at if there's anything negative in his style. A couple of things that he's got to watch out for. Against Frampton, because he had that high left hand to block the right hand over the top, he just left this section here open a little bit. And for me, a weakness isn't getting caught there once. It's probably getting caught there five or six times. Then that's an area of concern. So if we look at this now, watch the right hand from Carl Frampton. Keeps casting downstairs. There's the first one. And, and, and you know, if you look at, look at Josh Warrington, he's high with his guard here, 
but do, again, right hand downstairs. I think this is a, a thing that we've pointed out before with, with Josh Warren. He does it in all his fights, not just this fight, because he has such that high guard, which yeah. he needs, because he, he rushes forward yeah. and he wants to just smother your work and, and, and sort of stunt your shots. But he does leave that body open. He takes a good shot. Yeah. But like you said, you keep taking him. And someone like Galahad, who moves, really, who has that real, like, like all Ingle fight, really good footwork pivot on the front foot. Yes. They can move yeah. on the target really quick. He'll get a different angle of the body, and that, and that could be a problem for, for Josh. If he's got his hands up here, where it's sort of like, it's also it, your vision is tunnel vision, so you can't you know your peripheral vision is a little bit a little bit you know, blocked and clouded. And if if Galahad can use that footwork and where he switches the softball quite effort, like, you don't even see it at times and move around the target, then he's whipping those body shots from literally where I'm stood now with, with, with next to Anthony from the back and the side. You can't see him. When he stands toe to toe, he's literally a fighter who's prepared to take a shot, to land a shot. Sometimes that's not a good thing. It's got him through these fights, definitely. But let's have a look at, again, against Carl Frampton. When he's standing toe to toe, he has lots of success, but he's also, my point is, he's there to be hit yeah. himself. Yeah, there's no, there's no denying that Josh takes chances. Yeah. He takes chances, but he has that belief, and I think I'd, I'd back him as well. Could it, it, could, it, could, it, could it be his undoing? Could it be his undoing though, Anthony? He could walk onto a sharp counter, especially one of those, you know, but it's, but sharp it's... shot of the middle, you know, from from this with Galahad switching. But one thing I do. This is, here, watch this here. Strength. This is a good section now for for Carl Frampton. Just catches uh, Josh Warrington with a couple of shots. There's Josh unloading there. But here has Frampton has a little bit of success. Look, he's a little bit too square, and he's not bothered what's coming back, is he? No, he's he's made his mind up. I think and he's that... got that belief with him being so physically strong. He puts yeah. him on the back foot, and it, like you just said, there, I think Barry nailed it there. It stops any kind of leverage coming back from the opponent. Yeah. I think what you've got to do is, and I think what I imagine yeah. Kigal had and the English are going to try and do is trying to make that space to sort of catch him coming yeah, in. Of course. Before the guys do their stuff in the ring, we caught up with Josh Warrington earlier on. One more fight and then it's into the, the areas where we're never being expected to get to, or it's just unseen territory. I mean, so many good fighters have like, been taught to, to get to a certain level and they've fallen that hurdle and we've gone past that. And could it go even further now, not just be a great fighter from, from Leeds or Yorkshire, but be a great fighter from England, from this country. And I just see, through his, his, his bad man persona, and I just think there's a certain ways how you conduct yourself as a fighter, and to, you know, bad mouth everybody, people's achievements, and just little things like, after we boxed Carl, you know, it'd be an emotional night just before Christmas. Barry was trying to get in the ring, you know, to make the show about him. It's, there's, ti there's, there's times to do stuff like that. He's got to switch it in style, he can frustrate f uh, folk, and he can spoil them, tie them up, not let them work. Um, and the shots, what it brings from unorthodox angles, you're not your textbook shots, so you have to be wary when he's switching over then bringing shots. Um, but I think, yeah, I think they're the, a lot of his plus points, but when you look over the, the fights that he's had and the opposition who he's boxed, a lot of the time he's had his own way and being able to do that. You take that away from him, that, um, the areas of the time, distancing, and can he do it? And made my mind out on, on, on unifying the vision. I mean, this is all, you know, dream stuff. It's all dreamland, and sometimes I do have to pinch myself about talking about it, but it's also like 36 minutes away from being reality. You know, it's the one man is stood in the way of, of that. After all the people we've beat, after all the fights we've been through, all the hours and hours of, of gym work and punches to head, and it's just like there, you can almost see it. You're, more, you're stood behind the fence, rattling the fences, you can see all that dream landing, and it's just got to be that one man go through them gates and you're in there. Guys, Josh Warrington is a big favourite in many people's eyes. How does he win this fight? Well, I'll just say it. So, You've got Gallagher here, he's moving down, he's like stalking. What do you see? What do you see with them? Um, with Josh? Josh? Yeah. I'm really interested to see me with Josh. How he comes out. I don't know, does he come out and does he straight does he does he put it he steps in behind that jab to look to, to raid Kid Galahad early? Or does he wait? Does he wait? Does he wait? Does he wait for Galahad well, to get... then to be, you know, to try and overcommit and then hit him with the twos, threes? But Galahad likes to stalk, doesn't he? So he Galahad does. will come here, he'll stalk, he'll look for it, and he he'll, he'll probe with the jab. Downstairs. And so, do you, can, you, can you envision Warrington allowing him to come forward? 
I can. I can envision him allowing him to come forward. But I mean, so, so what does he do? He's going to. I'm not saying he's going to, but if he does, if he does, I think he's going to, he's going to try and get. If he does decide to sit back, it's obviously to try and get yeah. Galhad to overcommit, which Galhad sometimes will, will come down. Yeah, when he throws out, yeah, yeah. When he, he throws the jab then, there. And the speed of Warrington as well is very underrated. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying when he comes in and he raises a point and he'll come through and he'll come up and down. He might start low and he'll finish up high. And then, how does he exit? Still, does he, does he come yeah, and he's got to come out to the side. I believe he's got to come out to the side. I think you've got to. And that's the interesting thing with with an ingle fighter as well, with, you know, the footwork so good, yeah. very unorthodox. Hard to but, read all the time. Yes. Here's one for you then. We all expected Josh Warrington to come out on the front foot against Lee Salby, which yeah. he didn't. Is he going to do the unexpected this time? Uh, gee, I, I, I think... It's, it's a, I think he's better pushing Galahad back for me. I think, I think you no, know, because Galahad likes to stalk at times, but I think he likes to fight at a low pace. So for me, if he's pushing Galahad back with the, with the feints all the time, like this, all yeah. the time, and then when he does attack, I think it's really important that he goes this way. Yes. Or, more importantly, if, if he's also not, if he can go this way. For me, for me Galahad, he's, when he throws the jab, it it's depends, fast. It depends where Galahad's going to stand, whether he's yeah. that or whether he's going to switch. But, but either way, with, uh, he's also a soft boy. When he throws the jab, he don't put much behind it. He just touches it. Because he's touch. looking for something. Range so, finder. so for me, if it's, a if it's the left jab, for me, I think Wallander goes boom, 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 boom. It's all yes. double right hand. And if he's a soft boy, I think he goes, he, he takes it. He does that so well with the high yes. guard. He takes it and does the same thing. Boom, 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 and goes this way. And with these thousands of Leeds United fans that back him, they're going to be very, very vocal. Surely that's going to have an effect on how he boxes as well. I think that's going to have an effect on Galahad, because if, if, if it's a hard fight for Galahad and he's getting caught more than he's used to, and you hear these lunatics every screaming fight, down every on you... Every punch is going to be screamed on. And you hear them, the panic set could set yeah. in. So you know you're in a hard fight, you're getting caught more than you used to, your head's getting rocked back, or you're finding it hard to hit the target, which is unusual for Galahad. If that can happen, the crowd will only just intensify that, that pressure and that doubt on yourself. And one thing's for sure, I think, with Galahad, he seems to be a very cool customer. Very cool, yeah. very soft, fights his own fight. He listens to exactly what Dominic Ingall says, but he's never boxed in an atmosphere like that. That, that atmosphere at that arena that night, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. And when, is it, when a shot that only our fans gets a massive reaction, how's he going to react then? How's Galahad going to react? Does he think, right, He's, he's normal game, he's big patient, I'll get you back. Does he try and respond a lot quicker and does that be his undoing? We have to see that on the night. And that's how we see it for Warrington. So that's how we think Josh Warrington will approach the fight. Join us after the break and we'll take a look at Kid Galahad. We need characters, we need entertainers, but we don't need people like Barry. When Kid Galahad gets in that ring, I'm not messing about. I can just do everything a little tiny bit better than him. This ain't your time, I'm telling you that now. Welcome back to No Filter Boxing. Now our attention turns to the challenger, Kid Galahad. Barry, I'll come to you first. What has he got to do to win this fight? Again, I think as Mildred sort of men talked about, I think he has to somehow slow Warrington down. I think if you just... Because I think Galahad likes to fight at a slower pace, because he may, maybe he looks technically... We said this before about Warrington, we proved wrong. He looks technically a little bit better. He likes to place his shots and pick his, pick his targets really, really, really fluently. So I think he has to just slow the pace down. And a lot of that's with the footwork. Fainting, moving on the target. And as Andy's already mentioned, we'll go into the body. I think that's important for him. But so if he can slow the pace down and just make Warrington think about before he attacks, and that, that means sharp counters, I think, no, I think he's, he's a real live underdog in the fight. But Anthony, um, Kid Galahad will be the underdog. Is that an advantage? I think it probably is, yeah. I think it is, and I think that's why we see the mind games come in play a lot from the England camp. And um, I think they're trying to rile Josh up so, so he flies at him, so he flies at him, so he, he can walk Josh onto shots. And I think for Kid Galahad, to, not just to have success that night, but, you know, to win that night, I think it's so important the way he starts. If, um, if Josh wins the opening few rounds and then Kigal has, has to go and chase the fight, yeah. they become, a tough night becomes much more tougher. I think the first two, three rounds are so important for Kigal had that night. And does the crowd play a part here? Yes, I think so. I think they've been... Not, not, not a whatever, third man, whatever you want to call yes. it. They've been a massive help for him throughout his career. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, pressure. 
But I think, no, that's gone, though, because he's... Yeah, he does he, it so well. Yeah, and he's got to the summit. He's won a world title now. That was always a pressure that... You know, he's had that pressure, and then when, he, when the biggest night of all in, you know, in, in Leeds, with, with, in Ellen Road, would it actually be implode, would be too much pressure for him at the height? Because there's no enough pressure just trying to win a world title. That's your lifetime ambition. I think he feeds off that, though. He does, I think oh, he yeah. really does. He's one of those fighters who feeds, similar to the way Ricky Hatton did, he feeds off the atmosphere. Without getting carried away, he doesn't get like a lunatic thing. He, he, get reckless, he runs in no. the ring, but he, he still keeps his head. He, I was impressed yeah. with how calm he was against Lee Selby, yeah. considering it was the biggest night of his life in his, no, in his dream venue. But at the same time, he will not want to lose to a local man. Sheffield and Leeds, it's the big rivals. It is, but I also think it's a case of, as well, the first time. I know the boxers, you have to have that, everyone's against me a little bit. But your gym, especially, yeah. they're greater than you know, Joe yes. Souls, that, no, no, no one's in mentality sort of Yeah, yes, that thing. Man, yes, that Man United thing, isn't it? No, everyone's yes. against you, know, that's it, and, and it gets you through. You want to prove people wrong, and you know that. You know, in boxing, the odds are against you winning everything, anything, of course. So, and Warren has had that. No one, no, and no one thought he'd beat Selby. I, no, this, I literally said I think Selby couldn't play with him. Yeah. How wrong was I? Frampton, Frampton. I just think he hits too hard. He'd be too strong, and in no two season, yeah. proved us wrong again. Me especially. Now, he's the favourite. Yeah. No, it, it's different for him. For the and, first and, time in a while. Yeah. And yeah. Kid Galahad's the one who everyone's writing off, and they'll be telling him, "Listen, no one gives you a chance here. This is your. You could prove, prove these people wrong, and that gives you a little bit, a bit more bite." Of course, it doesn't. And the England camp, the, you know, the history that they've got. They've said for a long time, Kit Galhad will be world champion, so they see something in him. I think they see him as one of the most dedicated fighters there is out there as well. It's, um, I can't wait for fight night. Yeah. I can't wait for fight night. We spoke to Kid Galahad earlier on, who was in a really confident mood. I'm more than ready, you know. Um, I've been training 16 years of my life for this position. It's very hard to, to get a shot anywhere, you know. Um, especially in this weight division, you know, featherweight. I believe, you know, on paper, he's going to be the best fighter I've boxed. And I believe on paper, you know, I'm going to be the best fighter he's boxed. He's fighting someone who's, you know, hungrier than him, fresher than him, you know, and, you know, is willing to go, you know, extra step, the bent, the extra step than he is. You know, as a fighter, when you find anybody, there's always got to be, you know, a certain amount of animosity. You know, you don't really want to be fighting people who, you know, are your friends and whatever. Personally, you know, He's not unifying the vision. He's going to go on to fight, you know, you know, the likes of, you know, Oscar Valdez, but it's not going to be with the IBF title. If you want to be a champion, these are the things you've got to do. You've got to go in the lion's den, you know, and I've been preparing for this fight, you know, since the age of 12, 13 years old. I'm more than ready for this, you know, for the fight. This is destiny, you know. Um, this is meant to be, you know. It's like they say, you know, in the Arabic saying, Maktoub, you know, it's written. And, um, you know, it was written for, you know, Josh Warrington to beat, you know, Lee Selby that night and even Carl Frampton, but, you know, and I think when he boxed them, he had 26 fights, you know. 2019, you know, 2008 was a great year for him, but 2019, there's a hungry lion and, and that, you know, the hungry lion's kid Galahad and 2019, you know, it's going to be my year. OK, guys, I think everyone agrees kid Galahad has got a real tough fight on his hands. But, you know, he's confident. Show me, how does he win this fight? Well, I, I think as well, I think confidence is the key for Galahad. As is with all Ingle fighters, they feed off it. They, yeah. you know, they try to take your confidence away. Now, you tend to think that Galahad's a mover because he's an Ingle fighter, that he yeah. dances around. But I, I think he's a stalker. Yeah, no, I, I always try, he comes out and he, he looks to take the centre of that ring from yeah. the off. He comes out, he literally comes out, jogs out, and looks to take the centre of that But how ring. does he, with someone like a, with the Warrenden who fights at a high pace, how does Galahad come out and do what he does with other fighters? How does he put him in the pressure with the front foot with the guy who's going to throw a million punches back? So, I, so if I'm Galahad here and I'm, and I'm pushing... Uh, no, actually, I'm Warrenden here. You, yes. you be Galahad, I'm Warrenden. And I'm looking to come forward. I'm like this, I'm looking to come forward. I'm looking, you can see, you know, I'm waiting to go... Brrrr. I th how do you stop me? That's what, he'll tease with his front foot. I believe he'll tease with the front foot. He'll dip, dip it in and out. And he'll be looking to draw, looking for reactions out of Josh, looking for Josh to commit so he can land that one. I don't see Kid Galahad, I, d I certainly don't think he'd be advised to, to be letting him go in threes, fours. I don't I think no. it'll be singles, yeah. doubles at most. Can Kid Galahad cope with that pressure from Josh Warrington? Is he strong enough to handle that? That's the big question. I, I think if, 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 if you can be Warrenton for a minute and I'll be yes. Galahad, especially at the South Post, like if you come forward and I do, they do that so well, yep. The body we were talking about, the big angle there, he whips the body. Yeah. And I think as well, it's constantly making, making Warrenden turn. Warrenden turns, you've got to go with him. 
So the switch hitting, orthodox to safe ball, safe ball to orthodox, that's going to play a big part? I think so, because you, yeah. see, you see when, when Galahad goes back, or he moves back, he'll almost go like this back. So you're not sure, yes. and that makes you know he can always attack from either hand just effectively. So he's always setting his feet as he's being pushed back. So switching, moving back rather than going forward. I think for me, for me, I think the, yeah. the, the, the angles, the pivoting is going to be very important for Galahad. It's almost like a matador to the bull that Warrington will be. I think he has to make, has to ole him, ole yeah. him, and whip the shots in, keep, keep him constantly turning, a turning target, and when he's moving back. Don't go back in straight lines. You have to go back. When Wallace is rushing you forward, you have to go back and you have to go back and you have to ch keep changing the angle so Warrington can hunt you down. And we've talked about the body shots from Josh Warrington, but Kid Galahad has a safe ball. That left, left uppercut downstairs, that's going to be a, to the body. That's going to be a big shot, do you reckon? The left uppercut and, and the straight left. A lot of the times you'll see him back foot and just down and touch, touch, down. And, um, and I think he'll be, look to bring that into play from well, the I think off. you mentioned it earlier on, I think the fact that because, because one of his hands are like this, they are high, there's a gap on the back, but that gap in the middle. Yeah. And, for, and when you mentioned about what Galahad Sometimes did, the straight, straight shots, straight down the middle. Yeah, yeah. I think he's open for that. So I think, it's a, I think the body shots to slow, down, to slow down the guy with a faster pace, which one has, is important. So I think it's, it boils down to this for me. Warrenden has to force Galahad to fight at the pace he, he, that he's yeah. uncomfortable with, and Galahad's got to slow Warrenden right said. down so he can pick his shots more effectively. Has Galahad got the power to dent the armour of Josh Warrenden? I think he has the power to dent the armour of, of lots and hurt people, but I think what Warrenden has shown is that he's been hurt in the past, but what he showed in the, in the Carl Frampton fight, and, this, and how good he was and dominant he was against Frampton, he took some fantastic yeah. shots that would have rocked most people to the soles of their boots. I think once he's determined, once he's decided he's going to come at you, he's hard to deter. So again, it all goes back to, uh, and you mentioned it earlier on yeah. really well, Anthony, that I think he works the body, and that, 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 that not only slows you down, that weakens you. And I think then those, those, those uppercuts and, and, and straight left hands, they might come and be more effective. Cheers, guys. Well, that's all we have time for this week, but we're really looking forward to an exciting world title fight. It's Warrington versus Galahad, it's Leeds versus Sheffield, and it's live on BT Sport on Saturday night. Don't miss it. Everybody, apart from Warrington, thinks this is an easy fight. I just feel like when I hit him, he's going to have a shock. I believe I will knock him out. Last year, we had, like, Ray Selby, <laughs> Carl Frampton, and now we've got Baddy from Sheffield. This is not a fight that he wants. I will not stop until I've won.